welcome back guys to another episode of we love pets if you guys want to join the conversation leave questions for our guest here in our dog bowl use the hashtag we love pets on all the social media channels you can reach out to rob at pet world insider he's on all of the platforms or you can reach out to me at producer Derek. we'll get those questions submitted but our guest today in studio with us is candace and chloe polka dot and you've been a a friend, a fan, you've been here at the studio for mm -hmm. the photographer years. You've done yes. a lot of stuff with us in the past, but we finally get to have you on camera with us and we want to kind of share a little bit of your pet history. So I think the first question we have for you is how you got all started in the pet world. Uh, well, Chloe is my second dog. My first dog was a pet, you know, so it was, um, you know, it never, it was just somebody that, you know, I had his company before home. And uh, when I got Chloe, it turned out to be something absolutely different. And I think a lot of it has to do with how so much has changed in the uh, pet industry. We have so much more information about, you know, doing things for dogs and how we can make them more a part of our family. She is really wanting this She wants treat. that treat. <laughs> really? I don't blame her. I don't want her. I don't blame her. She's laser focused. So uh, I think it really hit me when I first got Chloe um, because every breed has different things. My first dog was a wire fox terrier. And so this was my first Yorkie experience. So I did a lot of research on the internet, which I never really did with my first dog and started learning a lot. But it really happened when we would walk Chloe and I would have people stop me and they would say, thank you so much. This is the first time I've smiled all day. <laughs> well, she has that habit. <laughs> I'm going to borrow this. And you're going, wait, Rob, you've clearly eaten enough. And yes, you are right. You'll get this at the end. But I want everybody to see how cute you are. Because that's true. I, I live in a uh, town like you do um, where we walk around the circle. We walk around the square. And... You know, Old Town Orange just has that mm -hmm. everybody's friendly, but then you you see you guys coming down. And, folks, if, if you haven't seen her YouTube channel, which I know we're going to get to, but you also, you really have amped it up. And it does. It puts a smile on everybody's face. And, you know, they walk into the soda shop and they come out and there's this amazing dog in this amazing vehicle or just sitting there in the square taking photos. And you're, you go... Oh, this is not normal. This is so awesome, and so yeah, I think my first uh, time actually we got to, we got you in the studio for some photographer photos, but then I think our first time of seeing the craziness that is Chloe Polka Dot was at the Halloween uh, hot dog parade yep. where you had the full ice cream truck. Oh, out. the ice cream truck! And, and, and I love that. Her through the parade, and I'm just like, that's awesome. And, <laughs> exactly. Like, it was one of those things where like this is this is for someone who, who loves their dog. And goes above and beyond to share that with everyone else and it was a cool thing so yeah i, I totally understand where you, you walking down the streets you're getting those like oh mm -hmm. that's cool thank you you made me smile for today because those are the kind of things that i think in the pet world we get a mix back we get some of those things where that's it's fun we get some of those people who are like it's just their pet they don't want to interact but you're taking it because i mean you do a lot of stuff on social media for the pet world you do a lot of stuff on like rob saying your youtube channel so let's talk a little bit about that and what uh, you guys do together uh, well, let's see. We have a YouTube um, channel. I, I think primarily we um, have a lot of interaction on Facebook. Face, so you say, are so popular on Facebook. We love Facebook. Yeah. And we just have just met some incredible people all across the country and even in the world. And uh, we're so fortunate to be able to um, just be able to engage with people from all over with just the common love for our dogs and our pets and um, being able to for me it was taking the walking her down the street and making one hap one person happy to taking it to Facebook and being able to impact more people and bring that joy to a broader audience well and you also have the meetup group that you had been involved with for so many years did so many cool events so you haven't just sat back and gone oh she's you know cute and people adore her you have really altered your lifestyle and i don't think people understand that level of you know they look and see the success you've had on facebook and they go oh well just ha yeah, yeah but it, it's more yeah. 
Wh- how did you get to that point where you're like, you know what, I am, I'm going to keep doing this because you have done and consistently done this? Mm-hmm. Well, I have a very obsessive personality. So <laughs> <laughs> I go to um, the extremes in a lot of things that I do. I just don't do things haphazardly. And one of the things about, you know, when you, uh, start doing Facebook is is that now I'm watching Chloe and I'm bringing her personality alive. And one of the reasons why this worked so well is because Chloe loves people. She loves people so much and she loves dogs and she's such a social creature. She wants to be in front of people. She wants to be the center of attention. So it was pretty natural to be able to do these really crazy things and she would just um she would just love it she loved all of it and it really bonded us too because it takes a lot of training and for us to be really kind of connected because when you're in these really big groups it can get really chaotic you have to make sure that you know you're together on what's happening right so anyway um that's kind of why we it just kind of kept on growing and it got more exciting because you know you're making people happy and it's fun it became very engaging and it's sort of like well what else can we do and how else can I creatively express myself and then also have her participate with that right right I think that um, I am a very creative person and so I like to see where that takes me well i i know i've enjoyed it a lot you've also you've done books i mean she's appeared in so many different things and yeah, we did the we were at the ferris wheel doing photos for yeah one of yeah. The books. At, yeah. Bal- yeah down in balboa yeah, down yeah. In balboa, and then we did uh, the sand castle right oh yeah in heinz and well and the, and the thing that's so interesting about that is if derek and i showed up and just said hey can we put a dog on the fair they'd be like no but because Chloe Polka Dot is so sweet and adoring, <laughs> we just said, hey, can we put, and they, oh, yeah, hey, and they opened all these doors. <laughs> yeah. It was really, I mean, it was it was fun because yeah. they made that opportunity available because they saw, you know, the care and the love, and they got mm-hmm. that smile that you're talking about, like, oh, my gosh, you're absolutely. And I just, you know, I want to know some of the things, though, that you've accomplished that you said, I am going to do this because I think that's one of the things for folks out there that are looking at. Yeah. Because you were saying you got into some crazy stuff with her. Like, what's the craziest thing you've accomplished? Yeah. I think that's kind of where I'd like to go. Yeah. uh, I think that when I started doing videos is when some of that started happening, the craziness, because um, when you're doing video with people, it's a little bit, you can hand out scripts, you can say this is what we're doing, but when you start videotaping a dog and you have an idea for something, it doesn't go as planned. <laughs> you never know, know what you're going to get. Right. <laughs> like, you know, toys, speakers, <laughs> treats, how are we going to convince this dog to do what we need? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, the big thing was when we had purchased this, um, this child's pink, it's a pink car. Yep. And um, we had purchased it, and it was motorized, and it was so I could manually do it this way. And um, I thought, you know what? I bet you I could teach Chloe to look like she's driving. And so we would um, put her in the car, and she, you know, eventually she was able to, like, drive and wave and look and do (laughs) all these different things. So we did our car video um, production, and... Whenever I do a video, I never know what I'm going to get. I just keep on rolling because every single time, I tell you not, she will do something that I'm like, I can't believe she did. You check the camera to make sure you got it. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe she just did that. And, you know, she makes me laugh so much. But we just have a lot of fun. And, you know, like everything, I think everything comes down to intention. And, you know, our intention is to have fun. Our intention is to, you know, help other people uh, put a smile on their face. And I think that's why everything works. That's, that's great. Wow. Now, t- tell us a little bit about also, you know, the Facebook world. You have done it successfully. 
Why do you think you've been so successful in, in, in the Facebook world in particular? Uh, well, Facebook, when I first started, it was, uh, it was, it, it was really different. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Everybody was kind of pointing to it. Um, it was mostly younger at that time, and they were saying, you need to get on it. And I didn't really know why, but I knew, coming from a marketing background, that I needed to understand the way that we were all moving as far as engaging with people in our culture. And so I was willing to go out and, and start playing around with it. And I knew from the very beginning what I could see was is it was all about engagement. You can sit it there and put up photos and you can do those things, but it's really about connecting with people. And so how do you do that when you have you know, a big audience? How do you do that? But one of the things I'm proud of is that people feel like that, um, that Chloe really loves them. Like there's this little being that, that really loves them, you know, and they feel it and they feel like they know her and they feel like that she's like a part of their lives. And so um, that's, that's the reason why I think it's been successful. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that relationship that comes, it's, it's genuine. I mean, there's a reason why you've been part of what we do here. It's like, it's a genuine love for pets. I mean, that's the one thing mm -hmm. that I don't think most people outside of the, like, the people who are hardcore pet people don't understand how genuine that love for these animals are. There's that people who I think are at that level of like owning a pet and then there's people who own a pet. If you understand what I'm saying, like we, we all love our pets to a degree that the average pet parent I don't think is getting quite yet, but I think they're getting more. And as it's the, maybe mm -hmm. that second dog or that third dog, they're understanding there's so much more that they're giving back to us. I, and it's that genuine care and love for that four-legged creature or three-legged. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think the other, yeah. the, the other aspect of that is times changed. We didn't, when we grew up, we didn't have a fate. Well, I mean, you're still growing up, but we didn't have a Facebook and, you know, I, I tease my daughter all the time. She's like, dad, I need a phone. I'm like, you'll get a phone when I got one at age 27. Okay. So, you know, it, it is a different time as well. And you can connect in ways that you just couldn't have even thought of back then. And so I think that's the other aspect of it. And I always say, I, I don't own my pets. My pets own me. And I'm proud of it. it. It's, you know, it's it's such a blessing. And I think in the past we were all, because we were on our own and disconnected, we weren't as open to saying what we now know, like, hey, I'm not strange. Well, I, I'm no, like no, the no, rest. Well, strange, I am strange. But, okay. Yeah. yeah, I won't sell myself short here. I am strange. But, yeah, it, it is something where you can get together, and you've done that with the groups of, of folks, you know, whether it be the Yorkie owners or others who, you know, feel that same compassion and, and drive that you do as well for their pets. And, and nobody looks at you and goes, oh, okay. You know, they look and go, yes, I get you. You get me. <laughs> yeah, it's that we can connect with people now much easier with like-minded or, or those niches that we love or those things that we enjoy out of our life. And it's not just staying back mm -hmm. and being like, there's no one out. No, there's a whole world of people who love mm -hmm. pets. And I mean, that's why we're here having the conversation. That's why we're in. It is. I mean, everybody that comes through here is all having that same passion. I mean, and it all starts. I mean, for all of us, it's all started, mm -hmm. I think, from owning that animal and that they change something inside of us. And it makes us kind of go, shoot, we got to do something more. We got to do better. We got to go from the next step. <laughs> I want to go back a little bit in history here. Now, you're, you said you've had two dogs. Was there one in the childhood that kind of got you started or the first mm -hmm. dog? When, when about did you have that first dog? And tell us a little bit of story back uh behind that dog that dog uh that dog was during a time i always wanted a dog i wasn't allowed to have a dog i was in the same boat then we ended up getting one and now everybody we're all we're a dog family so, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's uh, all like you can't have a dog no I have a dog. can't have a dog no got a dog <laughs> so so when i got a dog it was you know in my adult life and um i was making a lot of money i was doing really well uh working a lot so I um, got a dog because I was single and, um, you know, wanted to have that experience 
because I was making the money. I could do everything that I, you know, wanted to do. And, um, but she suffered, you know, because I just was just working so much. And I think that, you know, sometimes we have experiences in our lives and it actually teaches us for our next experience. And um, I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to with her. I loved her so much. Um, I just know that there was so much more that we could have had together. So when I got her, I made, you know, I made a promise. I said, you know what? We're going to have a completely different relationship. And, um, you know, and so far we have. Um, and it, a lot of that has to do with that other experience. Yeah. I mean, Good. We, all, we can ha say exact same. I mean, from the first one, we learn from them. And unfortunately, I mean, they, they are, they're that stepping stone for us to make yeah. the next one a little better and the next one a little better. So, I mean, it's, it's that same story I think we've heard a lot. I mean. Yeah. Well, I think we get we, we we go through those and we get inspired by them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reasons we all they came into our life to begin with changed over time who we were and what we were getting out of it. And, you know, you get that that guilt of, wow, I did not give back as much as I got. And mm -hmm. even now, when you do change, you still feel that way. So <laughs> I don't think I that's do. going to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to change. I just, I think yeah. that's, you know, the, the old adage of parents always want to see their children do better and will sacrifice and do whatever they can. Mm -hmm. I now get that. I now understand that. And, mm -hmm. um, so no, I, 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 I want to know what's the strangest thing you and Chloe Polkadot have done though. Because I, I know there's got to be a great story there. The strangest thing? The strangest thing. The strangest thing. Because I know you have been out on hotel, you know, you guys all rent out a, a big hotel in the hot springs and go to events. And <laughs> okay. then you, you all get dressed up and you, you know, walk around the orange circle and... I, I mean, okay. maybe those aren't strange. See, that's not strange. See, that's to not strange. Me. I guess, but but you okay. know, is strange that strange to other people? Yeah, strange but to other people. To Where other people went, uh huh. Okay, I got it. You know. Uh, okay, so so that that's a great question because um, one of the things about Chloe and her personality on Facebook is that she is always wearing clothes. So we've got people who, you know, they're purists and they don't believe that sure. dogs wear clothes. And some people are like, oh, we love it. And right. um, everything kind of in between. So we would walk around um, the Orange Circle because uh, when we first started walking, I used to take her on five-mile uh, hikes in Shady Canyon. Oh, wow. Which is beautiful. Right. But people would keep on saying, are you crazy? Yeah because of the coyotes and it's all nature and you know i had this little tiny three and a half pound yorkie on my right. side. they're like oh so um i started saying well maybe i should like walk her in more public places so that's how we started walking in the orange circle and i sort of teased that she was sort of like a mr rogers because she's so social so we would keep on going from you know, knowing all the shop owners. And so we would go and visit everybody, um, you know, every day. I mean, a lot. Um, so that's how that started. And she would wear clothes and then people would think that was cute. And um, where it started getting crazy is when I started going, you know, um, there's got to be an easier way to take her and like sit down at a restaurant or just take her through a really crowded place. And I had a dog bag, um, but she's social. And also she was, she had this sort of presence too. And because of Facebook, so we started using a stroller. Now to me, that's not a big deal now, but when it, when I went into that transition, it was sure. It was like, oh, my gosh, I have a stroller for my dog. <laughs> and I think that probably some people would um, be able to, you know, understand how I feel about that. Because, you know, you'll have people that look and go, <laughs> like, what? Yeah. What? what are you doing? The dog yeah. Cannot, yeah. Those kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's if you're if you're not living it, if you're not realizing how beneficial they are to to pets in some cases. 
you're never going to get it. And so we, yeah. we see well, that I, it's a stroller. Also, sure. too, I got to jump in here because you're <laughs> also leaving out something that was extremely unique. And it, it is one of those images burned in my mind forever. You're leaving out the chandelier. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I go through these phases. You have to understand, you know, I'm a very creative person and I get excited and I do something crazy. And OK, so the chandelier. So we, you know, my mind was always kind of racing around and I said, what could we do? Really fun. And so the um, stroller was such a great way for you know, people to be able to socialize with her, interact with her. And so I started dressing up the um, stroller. And I thought a really simple way to do that would be to get one of those locker looks that they the girls put in their lockers, the uh -huh. chandeliers that light up. And so we, um, I figured out how to um, attach it and be able to, so it would like detach and attach to the top of the um, stroller so that we could turn it on and turn it on so when we were going around at night and especially it was about the time of Halloween when I started creating that so it was really fun because we had the chandelier on and she was all dressed up in her um, her outfit and then I put and Chloe knows a lot of tr uh, tricks so we did a lot of training with her so she does a lot of tricks that help kind of entertain the moment and so one of the things that she did for Halloween that I taught her was to, you know, these little tiny um, pumpkins. Uh -huh. And, it, you know, like your trick-or-treat pumpkin. Well, they had these little tiny ones with a little. So she would put it in her mouth and hold it <laughs> in the stroller with the lights <laughs> in the back. So <laughs> people would go, oh, my goodness. So <laughs> we get a lot of that when we're, when we're walking down. It's pretty fun. I, and there's I, I don't know where to go with that because <laughs> I mean honestly that we've we've known you for a while now and there's a lot of stuff that we can go in and all the crazy that's there and all the fun that you do have but I now, think, do you think that's strange no I don't think it's strange <laughs> we've, uh, we've been in uh, into a bunch of different Derek's building yeah. his own yeah. full size yeah. version he's getting, so, a, he's yeah. getting oh, when tips Ro when Rob tires out at the conventions when we have to go I have to put I'll take that I will take that you yeah. know what yeah. get me one of those so, strollers I'll I, take I, it I think we've come to that part of the show where uh, we like to get people to submit questions from to our dog bowl so if you guys out there want to submit questions to our dog bowl use the hashtag pep, uh, sorry the hashtag we love pets on all the social media channels at pet world insider or myself at producer Derek, or even in the comment section down below this video we love to hear from you guys so leave us questions so we can ask our future guests but i guess you get to pick the question and we'll see what we can answer hmm. <laughs> okay all right let's see what we got okay what is your thoughts on pets in a classroom oh, that's a good one yeah mm. <clears throat> Uh, well, if I had Chloe and I were in school, I would probably, I would probably put her into the dog bag and then, in fact, I know a lot of people who actually do, they <laughs> just kind of put their dogs, when you have a little dog like this and you, you can throw them into a bag, I've taken her into movie theaters with me, <laughs> you just put them in the bag, zip them up and, um, take them in and, um. So, we'll have to have you for movie reviews. Yeah. Now, yes, we will. Well, yeah. as far as like how I feel about yeah. dogs being Well, and I think the other thing, too, is I think where they were going with the question is um, pets in the classroom is something that a lot of the organi uh, organizations have put in money so that people get exposed, kids get exposed mm. to pets in the classroom. Not necessarily, you know, hiding them in the desk. Take, yeah. Although I won't put anything past Derek. Yeah. <laughs> take her to class. yeah, that might not work. But I, I think, um, and I'll just jump in, but I'll let you, you know, uh, loop back now around. That here. I understand yeah, the so because to, to, to me, I think it's phenomenal. I know my daughters um, were part of that program and mm. they got that love at home, but when they were first starting at, you know, kindergarten and pre-K and all that, to have a pet was just a, another one of those, you know, warm feelings of, okay, it's not that different than home. And they got exposed to pets that, I, I, we have a lot of pets. We are not going to have some of the pets that they had at the school. 
All right, girls, not happening. Do not hit me up for this one. But they had all different kinds of, and so each year, mm -hmm. That's also been one of the exciting things of yeah. what's our class pet going to be. Yeah. And so I, I, I love it. I think it's great. Um, mm -hmm. What I would not advocate is sending the pet home for an evening, um, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody gets there. To, that is no. They, I mean, no, that's. It opens the doors for a lot of problems. A lot <laughs> of problems, a lot of stress. I know a lot of sitcoms go that route for the comedy. Yeah, movies. not. For comedy, but not for yeah. real life. Well, and it's not fair. It's not fair to the pet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, uh, it just. I, I think it's a great lesson for them. Um, and I love to see that aspect of it. So I'm, I'm definitely in favor of it. I think it opens up the doors to showing the, the, the care for pets at a younger age. I mean, if there was more of that, I think we'd see more uh, care for it in our adult years. And instead of us getting into the game late and understanding these things late, we could start from a younger generation and start growing that and be, mm -hmm. hey, maybe we can solve the rescue problem. Maybe we can solve the adoption mm -hmm. problem. Maybe we can solve it because there's more people caring for these animals mm -hmm. and understanding the compassion that's there for them. I think that's a big plus for it. Well, and they, they fall in love with these animals, yeah. mm -hmm. but they don't own them they don't live with them and that is such a great lesson as you point out learn that early carry it on the rest of your life well i think uh, also with um, dogs or animals is that they um allow people to open up in a way in a very non-stressful way yep. that they are sometimes not able to do when it's when you know just with people but animals have a way for us to be able to open up and I think that's why the connections with people and relationships become so much easier I mean you can go to a restaurant not know anybody right but if you see them with a dog it's so easy to start a conversation yep. it's great but if point. they don't have an animal and coming up and having a conversation for whatever reason it's it's just not as easy to be able to um, get into that space so I think that having that for children could be a really great learning environment because it kind of takes the stress out of the learning experience how cool would it be if we could get all the rescue dogs or the uh, I mean in shelters into like a classroom and like a dog in your classroom Oh, that'd, be, that'd, be right? that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be insane. I know it's yeah. a crazy long shot out there, but like yeah. having a training for the, that, my mind just went crazy when you're talking. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, what if we could do that? But, anyways, yeah. I, I, <laughs> great to have dreams, yeah, though. Right? <laughs> uh, so, this portion of the show, um, again, if you guys want to submit questions, please leave comments down below. But um, this portion, what we like to do is leave you uh, with one, one thing you can leave out to the pet world, one bit of knowledge, one tip that you can share, whatever it is out there this is your your soapbox to kind of give that tip and hopefully somebody out there is listening and maybe make some adjustment to their pet world my soapbox huh yeah. your soapbox <laughs> some of the things that i'm passionate about in the in the dog world or if chloe polka dot could just tap somebody and leave that bit of knowledge what would that bit of knowledge be hmm i think it would just be just love more just love more you yeah. know and everything that we do i think it's we can do a lot of different things but when it comes down to anything if you just focus on love everything works out i love that great, That's great. thank you chloe polka dot uh, thank you guys um we'd like to let you uh let us know your uh, facebook uh that people can reach out to you youtube whatever you're going to uh, throw out there so people know, can find you on all the channels um this is your great. opportunity so let us know uh facebook we're at uh, chloe polka dot and um, she's on YouTube, uh, which is Chloe Polka Dot too. If you look that up, she's on Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter. So I think we hit all the uh, social media and yeah, we would love to see you there. Right, Chloe? Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, guys, if you guys wanna learn more about Candace and Chloe Polka Dot, guys, reach out. She's got all kinds of great stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. You're gonna love whatever you go and to and see. There's some great things you guys can find out there. But if you guys want to join the conversation, leave a question down in the comments below or reach out on social media with the hashtag uh, we love pets. You can reach out to Rob at Pet World Insider on all the social networks or myself at Producer Derek. But thanks again, guys, for joining us on another We Love Pets. And until next time, um, yeah, love your pets. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs>